to the fourth annual Westside Mega Fair. This is session five, cosplay building your layers from inside out with Tori. All right, Tori, I'll give the speaking power to you. Great, thank you, Tori. Um, yes, welcome everybody to Building Your Cosplay from the Inside Out. Um, my name is Tori. I go by Making History on Instagram. Um, and I'm here to talk about cosplay. <laughs> um, let me start by saying that um, you, you'll see a big focus in this presentation uh, on the uniqueness of every cosplayer. I think it's um, kind of crucial to um, understanding your own cosplay, to understand your own reasons and goals for cosplaying. So I'm going to start with mine. Uh, I'm a cosplayer who is really heavily influenced by historical costuming. Um, I kind of dabble in both cosplay and historical costuming, and they tend to overlap a lot for me. Um, I really love the um, creative aspect of being able to mash up um, cosplay. For anyone who needs a definition, cosplay is basically dressing up as a character from a, a movie, a TV show, a video game, an uh, anime, almost anything. You can uh, pick a character or make, create your own character in um, a particular universe. Um, so I like to character that's already established and kind of mash it up with my own creativity. Um, and to me, I, I find it really appealing to go back to historical patterns, historical uh, silhouettes. Uh, that's where I find a lot of joy in my cosplay. Um, so in the practice of historical clothing, historical costuming, um, I learned this idea that you build your outfit um, from the inside out. So typically in the context of historical clothing, that means that you um, start with your undergarments, the things closest to your skin. Um, so you might be wearing a, a corset or a petticoat or a crinoline, um, and then you build everything from those base layers out because um, your overall silhouette, your overall costume, your look, really depends on and is created by everything that you build from the inside out. Um, and I decided that, you know, really it doesn't just apply to historical clothing, it applies to cosplay, you know, something that I do at the same time. Um, so I'm gonna give a little monologue here um, uh, for about 20 minutes on why I think layers are important, what they can do for you, how to think through what layers um, you, might use or might need, um, but always coming back to what your your hopes or goals for or goals are for your cosplay because not everyone's goals are the same. I fall back a lot on how to use corsets or crinolines um, because that's where I find a lot of joy in cosplay. Um, not everyone has to use corsets and crinolines, although it would be awesome if everyone did. Um, so let's start here. Uh, the big concept that I want to uh, reiterate throughout this and, and hopefully have you take away is that you should plan your cosplay from the outside in and then build it from the inside out. Um, so we, I, I can discuss that a little, a little more uh, further on, but essentially you're going to look at the, the character that you are imitating or that you are creating out of thin air what can you see and then what can you not see? So you have to start from the outside, think about everything under it, and then when you make it or purchase things or start uh, start building the components, you build it uh, from the inside out because your cosplay is just a compound effect of all the layers that you include. So let me start with, um, as I mentioned before, your reasons and goals for cosplay. Everyone has their own reasons for cosplay. Um, I think for a lot of people, you cosplay because you resonate with a certain character. Um, uh, so at, let me say, at the end of this kind of little lecture, um, I will be demonstrating um, how I build a character from the inside out by literally putting on each piece of my most recently finished cosplay. Um, it's again historically inspired, so you can really see the, the layers that go into the looks that I make, um, but the principles apply to things that um, are not nearly as large or, or complex. Um, but the reason that I picked this character, which is Najif, what we do in the shadows, 
um, is that I resonate with her and I find her really funny. And I think that's the main reason that a lot of people want to cosplay a specific character because you uh, find a lot of relevance in a show or you really love a character and you are expressing that um, through your cosplay. Um, maybe you just want to be creative and cosplay is one of those expressions. Um, like I said, I like to mash up a lot of uh, uh, characters and historical eras. Um, people, you know, mash up characters from different genres all the time and it's an amazing way to uh, express your creativity and see what you can do to create something new uh, out of a character or a show that's already established. Uh, building skills is another big one, I think, for, for a lot of people. Um, I knew how to sew going into cosplay, but I'm really able to learn so much more by um, applying those skills, running into to barriers or problems that I'm not quite sure how to fix. Um, and then learning as I go, you know, learning through a project to uh, make my next cosplay better or make something that's not cosplay really cool as well. Um, learning about a fandom is really awesome. If you research a character, uh, you often look into the character design, the people behind the, the show or the movie or uh, the, the video game. And I think you learn a lot of appreciation uh, for the details um, that go into um, uh, a production or a character um, or a character design. Uh, there are some people who cosplay mostly because they enjoy acting in character. Uh, I am not one of those. I cannot act to save my life. <laughs> um, I am pretty good at standing still and smiling, but um, uh, you know, I, I have a lot of respect for people who are able to inhabit characters, you know, usually as a way of expressing, I really admire or I really resonate with this character. So I'm going to, you know, act like um, uh, Captain Jack Sparrow for example. Um, and then lastly, I, I want to emphasize that cosplay can be just for fun. Maybe you're part, part of a group cosplay. You're not maybe particularly attached to a character or a show, um, but you're going for the experience of it. Um, I think for myself, I often get bogged down and wondering if my cosplays, my builds are um, well-built enough um, if they're high quality enough, but they can also just be for fun and that is a perfectly legitimate reason. So those were reasons. Now, if we go on to goals, um, the way I, I picture reasons versus goals, reasons I'm picturing that cosplayers have a reason for cosplaying in general. Um, and then goals, each cosplayer can have a different goal for a project. And the reason I'm going over goals and reasons as well is because those will inform what layers you use for your cosplay. Um, I think they're going to vary widely, cosplay to cosplay, cosplayer to cosplayer. Um, and I forgot to say earlier, when I say layers, I do not simply mean layers of clothing. Uh, the example that I'm going to give of myself is a lot of layers of clothing, um, but there are many kinds of layers. It doesn't simply mean that you are wearing, you know, three coats. It's, it's not that you're just building um, clothing on top of each other. Um, especially if a character doesn't doesn't warrant that, if a character isn't known for wearing, you know, two cloaks, um, you, you don't have to layer it just for the sake of um, trying to appear, um, you know, more 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 elaborate um, than it really needs to. Um, so, like I said, uh, every cosplay is going to have its own goals for that project. Um, maybe you just want it to be really comfortable to wear. Um, my, one of my favorite cosplays to wear is Mabel Pines, uh, from Gravity Falls, and she is my most comfortable cosplay to wear because essentially she's wearing a skirt and a sweater. Um, and I don't, um, have to make a big fuss over trying to perfect, um, a silhouette per se. Um, and I know going into it that I want it to be comfortable. So I deliberately pick sweaters that are comfy to wear, that are not too warm, that I feel comfortable in. Um, uh, one of my goals as well is often to have an inexpensive cosplay. Um, so, you know, that usually looks like me going to a thrift store, finding um, pieces of fabric to use um, that will, you know, fit the bill for what I need to sew, um, but that are still inexpensive. Uh, quick to make also, so that can also mean that maybe you're buying pieces or all of your cosplay, 
which is totally fine. Cosplayers often um, make their own outfits or their own pieces, um, but you know, it's good to know where your um, skills lie sometimes. Like if you are not skilled in styling a wig, maybe you need to hire someone to, to um, style your wig so you don't absolutely tear your hair out. Um, a lot of cosplayers, or at least some, are really trying to go for screen accuracy, also known as uh, high fidelity. Um, I think that's more complicated because you need to really take a look at the layers that have already been used uh, by the designer, by the show, what have you, um, and you have to replicate those layers as well as you can to get that kind of accuracy. Um, maybe you want your cosplay to be larger than life. Maybe, uh, maybe the character itself is larger than life. Uh, maybe you have to put on a huge, a huge animatronic suit. Um, but it's important to know going into it what you want your cosplay to do, what you want your cosplay to look at, to, to look like rather. Um, and I, I think this also goes back to, to screen accuracy. Not every cosplay has to be ready for competition, but if you want it to be ready for competition, you need to know that going into it because that's going to affect every decision that you make. So now that I've said layers a lot, let's get into what kinds of layers there are, uh, exist. Sorry, um, I David put something in the chat. Oh, sure. Um, sure, yeah, spreading source material. Um, raising awareness of a show that you think is really cool. I mean, I, I've learned about a couple of shows definitely just by going to a convention and seeing um, seeing what cosplays are there and, and learning what they're dressing at, dressing as, what they love so much. Um, so layers, like I said, um, the the first thing that you thought of probably when I said layers was um, pieces of clothing, which is definitely part of it. Um, when I say layers, I'm also meaning uh, accessories, props makeup, um, and I've kind of designated these as visible layers. So things that are seen by an audience, by an observer, um, by someone else at con, um, these are things that are probably going to uh, let people know who you are, um, you know, who you're cosplaying as, or maybe what universe you're from, um, or even what version of a character you're, you're going as. Um, so the examples that I'm giving here is, you know, maybe a, a shirt, a coat, uh, a, a sword, a, a makeup job. Um, those are the, the visible layers that um, speak the most to your audience. Um, but I would argue that um, at least in terms of kind of drilling down into um, a, a detailed cosplay, um, invisible layers are almost more important. <laughs> I'm not going to say more important, almost more important. Um, so invisible layers could be support garments, linings inside of uh, pieces of clothing, um, primers that go under paint jobs. Um, so the, the examples that I'm giving here, um, you know, you might be wearing a shirt, but you know, you need to wear a, a binder or a bra or a, a vest under the shirt. Um, uh, that also refers to the lining inside the coat, um, bearing in mind that whatever lining you put in a coat is going to affect how it moves, how it looks, how it hangs. Um, there is the, the weathering on the sword, which isn't quite invisible, but not a lot of people will, you know, stop you and only look at your sword to look at the weathering on it. It's a, a detail that might go unnoticed or kind of uh, people might um, uh, gloss over it, um, but it's really valuable in building out your cosplay um, making it authentic, building your skills. Like I said, whatever your, your, your reasons and goals for cosplay, these are, these are the examples of the two kinds of layers that I'm thinking of. There we go. Um, so why use layers? What can they do for my cosplay? Um, so visible layers, so like the, the pieces of clothing, the props, um, everything like that. They create visual depth and dimension, which I think is my, my favorite reason to use layers of clothing. Um, because, uh, of course, provided that your character kind of warrants lot, lots of layers uh, of clothing specifically, you're probably going to make an audience, you know, uh, con goers kind of stop, look at you. Um, and it is rather, it, it necessitates a moment to 
look at you and take in the layers that you are wearing that they can see um, because it adds kind of a depth of field. It adds a kind of a lifelike dimension, right? Um, visible layers, I mean, this is <laughs> kind of obvious because you're trying to replicate a, a character, like a specific character usually, um, but it adds recognizable elements. Um, so, you know, the, the example that I'm giving um, of, of Nadia at the end of this um, is her, you know, vampire fangs. If people see fangs, they're going to realize that you're supposed to be a vampire. Um, so it's often those visual cues or clues um, that uh, might enhance recognizability um, or just kind of clue people in generally to the universe that you're from. Um, again, screen accuracy can be enhanced by, by replicating a lot of the visible layers, um, even if the, the invisible layers, the under layers are not maybe precisely what they were in, in a, uh, the original show, for example. Um, if people can see, you know, you're wearing a, a cloak on top of some armor, um, people can, can visualize it from that frame of reference. Uh, it can also demonstrate something about the character, similar to adding recognizable elements. Um, I think demonstrating something about the character gives you a little bit more freedom or creativity to um, make the cosplay your own. Um, you know, for example, I cosplayed Tonks uh, a few years ago. And, you know, as far as I know, she doesn't wear a locket, but I chose to put a locket on my Tonks um, because I thought that, that my Tonks would, right? Everyone's interaction with cosplay is a very unique experience. And just because, um, you know, someone you admire or like um, has their own version of a character or of a cosplay doesn't mean that yours has to be the same to be as good. Um, that it's, it's really just about how, how you interact with the character. Um, color blocking is something that I think is extremely important for recognizing cosplays at a distance. Um, I mean, this is, I'm probably only thinking about conventions right now, but um, color blocking, as in recognizing, you know, what parts of the body or the costume are, are, are which color. Um, uh, I think that it's more evident in, in cartoons or, or anime, how you have maybe a very specific red cloak, or you have a really specific hair color. Um, and when you piece those, you, th those colors together, People can, if, if they're already uh, aware of that character, uh, of that uh, franchise, it's easy to tell from a distance um, who you are, who you're supposed to be, um, sh merely from, from showing the character, or excuse me, <laughs> the, the colors of those characters in the correct spaces, right? Um, and then one thing that I find really cool, this is, this is a new phrase that I learned uh, fairly recently. Um, if you have, uh, more layers. Again, I'm thinking specifically layers of, of, of clothing or of details on pieces of clothing or props. Um, you can add sympathetic movement, uh, which is the, the phrase that I learned, which is kind of a, a residual movement that you don't control. So um, if you have fur on a cloak, the fur is going to move a little bit while you walk, while you talk. Um, if you have, I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on a specific example, but if you have you know, tool or, or ribbon or um, uh, leather straps uh, on a sword, those are going to keep moving even if you stop moving. So it, it uh, begins, um, sorry, uh, it continues movement that you begin that brings the whole character to life because that is how, you know, real life people move. There, there are things about them that move as they move. So it just makes your character three-dimensional and brings it to life. So, and then speaking of the invisible layers as well, um, which again, might be more important. I won't say more important, um, but uh, using invisible layers can um, help you to fulfill your goals for that cosplay, right? I think the invisible layers can fulfill your goals usually better than the visible layers because the invisible layers are how you experience wearing it from the inside out. Um, so I, I think one of the, well, one of the, one of the important uh, things that invisible layers can do is uh, make your cosplay comfortable. I've, I've worn a lot of uncomfortable cosplays. 
Um, the one that I will be demoing um, is also uncomfortable, but you can make it more comfortable uh, once you realize what you want out of it, right? Or how you can manipulate the layers in your cosplay to make it comfortable. The example is pockets. Um, I don't want to carry around a backpack or a bag um, to a convention just to carry some snacks and my ID. Um, so if you can fit pockets in a cosplay, um, it's probably you know, more comfortable than carrying a bag around with you and keeping track of that, as well as keeping track of your, your cosplay, making sure that everything is in order. Um, and just generally making sure, you know, things don't uh, chafe or, or get stuck or sticky, uh, like using, using fabric lining can be a lifesaver. Um, my favorite use of, of invisible layers is providing structure. Um, like I said, I tend to use corsets a lot for my cosplays. Um, I think they, they provide a lot of uh, structure and skipping down uh, a bullet point, also silhouette, right? So um, a corset, for example, can, can do the job of um, both creating a silhouette and supporting heavy skirts, which is what I, I, I often use them for. Um, and then if, you, if we go back to, to silhouette, um, you might you know, need or want extra height for your cosplay. So you might wear extra tall shoes um, or, or padded shoulders um, that, again, an audience won't see from the outside, but it is what builds the overall look that people do see. Um, so, and then even, even things that people might see but not notice, um, I wear nude tights under cosplays where you can see my legs because it just makes everything a little bit smoother, a little bit cleaner. Um, and it, you know, lends a kind of kind of sheen that, that people will not notice unless they get really, really close to my legs. <laughs> um, and then one, one of the one of the cool parts of invisible layers is um, getting you in character, you know, maybe you, you know, are ha have a tiny prop in your pocket that you might not show people, but that gets you into character. There we go. All right. So a uh, big takeaway is that layers um, compose your, your cosplay, right? You, so you need to think while you're planning, while you're designing, while you're building, what is the overall or compounded effect of the layers that you're using? Um, so with that in mind, I'm going to uh, start my transition to uh, Nadia from what we do in the shadows. Um, so actually, but part of this takes a little bit of time. So uh, while I start talking about Nadja, I'm going to be putting on her boots. Um, as you can see, I have an underlayer on already. Um, I knew that I wanted to design Nadja as kind of a historical cosplay. Um, if, you, if you know about fashion history, you can see that her silhouette uh, in these pictures is uh, very reminiscent of the 1890s, you know, big sleeves. Uh, she does wear, wear visible corsets uh, throughout the rest of the, the series, um, you know, long, full skirts. Um, and you can see in this picture over here that she has some boots on. So um, I, I had that plan going into my design, my build for the cosplay. And I knew that I would have to build things from the inside out to get the look, the silhouette that I wanted. Um, so that being said, um, I'm going to switch this camera and then we can um, start looking at these layers. Actually, I'm going to put my boots on first. Um, so number one, I have socks on. Um, it's, it's not, a, you know, a cosplay specific thing to wear, but the reason I'm wearing socks is because I need to wear boots. And uh, if you do not wear socks with boots or shoes in general, um, you are going to have blisters and generally not have a good time. Um, again, these boots are also kind of an aesthetic choice because I know that she wears boots in the series. Uh, these are uh, Victorian re reproduction boots. So even though people at a con are probably not going to be seeing my shoes because I have a lot, a lot of, of skirt and, and bodice going on, um, it helps get me into character as well. So with boots on, I'm going to move this over and stop screen sharing. 
so that we can uh, take a gander. All right. So this over here. Um, so you have a little bit more of an idea of how this looks um, on its own body. Um, I will say two things as I get into this. Uh, number one, uh, I don't think it's possible to get into a cosplay quickly, so I'm going to do my best here. Um, and number two, uh, in the words of Adam Savage, uh, there is no such thing as a cosplay that is cool to wear, as in uh, you will always most likely be very warm while wearing a cosplay, and that's you know, not to harp on the layers again, but that's another important thing to think about while you're creating your look. Um, for example, um, I know that the layers that I've chosen uh, for this look are all made of polyester. The fabrics that I purchased were inexpensive, but they are polyester, which means that it does not breathe, and which means that I'm going to be dying a little bit every time that I wear it. But again, my, my goal of this cosplay is to have fun and to, you know, kind of embody Nadja. So I'm still going to go for it. So like I said, number one, I have my under layers on already. I have my socks and my socks and my boots. Um, I also have, again, this is my, my historical influence coming in, but I have my chemise. I have my drawers on. Uh, the most important reason why I am wearing those is because I'm wearing a corset. Uh, like I said, uh, I often use a corset to both uh, create a silhouette um, and support some of the weight of my cosplay. Um, you won't be able to quite tell how heavy the skirt is, um, but let me tell you that the skirt is an old curtain from Goodwill, so it creates a lot of, a lot of weight um, on your waist. And frankly, you don't want to have a lot of weight uh, on your waist for a long period of time. So I use a corset to distribute it to the rest of my torso. Um, so you can see that I'm lacing into my corset now. Uh, this is a, a corset that I made from an 1890s pattern. Uh, the, the most important reason that I'm wearing the under layers under the corset is because um, Again, this is my historical nerdery coming out, but you never, ever, ever want to wear a corset next to your bare skin. Um, that is a recipe for chafing and sweating and awful things. So I am using my corset to support weight and I'm using my chemise to protect me from the corset. All right, I'm almost done here and then we can move on to the next piece. Like I said, nothing is uh, quick in cosplay, with very few exceptions. Uh, and you do work with a sweat as well. Um, yes, I will say, speaking of wearing cosplays that are hot, uh, for those who don't know Adam Savage from Mythbusters, um, he is, you know, one of my idols in cosplay. He uh, makes and wears his own cosplays a lot. As, as I quoted him, every cosplay is hot. So one of the layers that he often incorporates in his own cosplays is a cooling vest or an air conditioning system. Um, it's you know, probably more complex than most of us would like to get into to make sure that we are uh, a little more temperature controlled, but that's another option. If you know that you're going to be uncomfortable, you can think of other layers um, and how to use those layers to, to mitigate the problems that you might have. All right, the next layer is my butt pad. Um, it's a little larger than they probably would have worn uh, in the 1890s, which again is the inspiration uh, that I'm, I'm taking for nausea. Um, but I'm wearing this because I, I watched the, the series, What We Do in the Shadows. I took some notes, uh, some reference pictures, and not just skirt, flares behind her a little bit. And when I tried my skirt without that kind of, uh, without this, uh, it just kind of falls flat. So this is another example of uh, a structure underneath your costume uh, to make sure that you get the silhouette that you want. All right. Next layer is 
Um, this is not maybe strictly necessary, but it gets me in character. Um, and it provides a little volume in the skirt because Nadja has big skirts, y'all. Uh, she has a lot of volume, both on top and on bottom. Uh, and this is one way to help create that. Yeah. And it's just a cute look. It is. I'm a history nerd. All right, so. Next big piece is her bodice. Um, I will say, speaking of layers, um, I think one of my flaws that I'm working on as a cosplayer is learning how to create layers, especially big layers that um, you can put on comfortably. I did not think of how to create openings in this, in the side or the front or the back. So I have to put it on like a t-shirt um, it's not very flattering, but people usually don't see this. <sighs> yes, uh, so let me struggle into this like a boa constrictor. All right. <laughs> like I said, learn from me, put openings in your cosplays. So how many layers have you put on already? What was that, Cindy? How many layers have you put on already? Um, let's see. Chemise, corset, petticoat, muscle pad, bodice, that's five. <laughs> oh, right. So you can see the difference right away in that this is my first visible layer, right? I happen to put it all together into one uh, gargantuan layer, but this is, um, you know, a, a layer that people will probably recognize if they are familiar with the series. Um, I'll also say, speaking of uh, invisible layers, that uh, these sleeves, these utterly enormous sleeves are created because I used two interlinings in making these sleeves. That's what makes them stand out so much. If I were to only use this velvet that you see, um, they would fall completely flat and they would have no volume and I would not look like a football player. So, um, second big piece is this skirt. Like I said, you can't tell necessarily on screen, but this is so heavy. Um, and again, speaking of getting into your cosplay, um, I made this before I made the bodice, which means I didn't realize I would have to put this on over my head. So if you'll excuse me for just a moment, just toss it over. So, Ooh, all right. So with that, it really starts to come together. I can close this behind me. There we go. So, there it is. Here we go. Last couple of steps are, well, hair and details. So, um, the, I mean, I, I think the, the, the bodice and the skirt, um, as well as the wig, are serving as uh, color blocking, right? Um, if you see dark curly hair, Uh, on top of a very scale, a, a very pale skin tone, uh, on top of, um, oh dear. on top of big sleeves and a big skirt, you're probably going to know who I am referencing. All right, so wig kind of on, uh, and then the last few details are just her accessories. Um, again, these are visible layers so people can see them will probably recognize them in context, but this is also where you can have a little bit of fun um, and add your own accessories, add your own twists on things. Um, if you feel comfortable that people will already know who you are and if that's your goal, then you can have a little bit of freedom um, in how you interpret that. So I'm gonna pop on a couple of rings because Nadja wears so many rings. And then the 
very final step is your vampire things, which I cannot talk in, so I will be silent for a moment and I will let you take it all in after I put these in. Wow, this is so great, Tori. I love it. All right, like I said, I can't talk in these. <laughs> um, so that is kind of a uh, a rushing headlong through layers and through putting on a <laughs> fairly bulky cosplay. Um, if anyone has any questions right now, I'm happy to answer them. Um, or we can sign off. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. Um, I will say I just uh, I just finished uh, sewing the bodice today, so I hadn't seen it all together yet. So pretty happy. Whew. I was not joking. It is warm in here. All right. Cindy, did you see any questions? Okay. So we have about eight minutes. If you guys have any questions, you guys can just unmute yourself or put it in the chat. Yeah, I will be standing here fanning myself. <sighs> um, I have a one question. So um, I saw the backpack support the skirt. Did you sew that backpack um, or did you buy it online? And if you sew it made um, yourself, what was things inside of it? Cotton or is the fabric? Yeah, so that's, a, that's a great question. Um, so I made everything that I put on. I made um, the uh the underlayers the corset the petticoat the bum pad and the bodice and the skirt i made all of those uh using historical patterns because that's how i operate uh the bum pad um uh the outside was made of kind of a thicker cotton and then um i had a lot of scraps left over from this project uh so i i filled it with uh some cut up scraps um and i think it works pretty well because it's a lot of a lot of volume and I didn't have to pay for any uh, batting or stuffing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Yeah, you should probably get one of the historical fans so it matches your costume. I know, I should, I should. Um, I was debating whether or not I should make her uh, her top hat that she wears sometimes, but I decided for me, I did not need that extra layer, mm -hmm. that uh, I was not so committed to that look that I uh, wanted to get even warmer. <laughs> now, I will say as well, pick layers or pick cosplays that you have fun with, because I could look at the skirt twirling for the rest of the day. So we have about six minutes. Yeah, any other questions thrown my way? Um, I'm just gonna keep looking at my skirt. I can't, I can't stop it. It's really pretty. Tori, do you want to talk real quick about um, your monthly cosplay meetup? Oh, yes. Thank you. I meant to bring that up uh, at the very beginning. <laughs> um, yes. So uh, if anyone here is interested in meeting cosplayers that are local to Hillsborough or Portland, um, we do have a virtual cosplay meetup that I host once a month uh, through the library. So that is the third Saturday of every month from 10 to 11. Um, so you're welcome to hop on those Zoom meetings. Uh, we're hoping to have a couple in-person um, meetings at the uh, Brookwood Library, maybe in a few months, we're, we're gonna see how things go. But for now, we are definitely doing a, a virtual meetup um, on the third Saturday of the month. Yeah, we've had, we've had a lot of good chats. It's always nice to um, you know meet other cosplayers, pick people's brains for ideas or problem solving or, um, 
I, I like showing off things that I've made that I'm proud of because not, not everyone really appreciates uh, the work that goes into cosplay props or accessories or, you know, wigs, for example. I'm, just, I'm still learning how to make wigs, style wigs. Really. Hmm. So if there are no any other questions, I'm just gonna launch a quick poll. It's gonna be anonymous um, and it's only three questions. Amazing. Some reason I can't launch my poll. My apology for that. Yeah, it's not letting me. It's not letting you do the poll. <laughs> oh, all right. All well, right, you guys. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for for joining us. Yeah, thank um, you for joining us. Yeah. Uh, again, if you want to talk cosplay even more, uh, come to our meetup. And other than that, I will probably see you all uh, at some con in the future. I am really looking forward to seeing uh, other nerds in person. <laughs> all right. Okay. I'm going to end it. Everybody. Bye, guys. Bye, Cindy. Thank you.